Ladies and gentlemen, we're back live with TMP3, The Continental Collision, and it's now come time for the co-main event of the evening. Five rounds of professional Muay Thai, three minutes around in the 63.5 Super Lightweight Division. Introducing to you first, standing 1.7 meters tall, weighing in at 63.3 kilograms. An excellent professional record, 36 wins, 7 losses, 2 draws, 14 wins coming by way of a knockout. He fights at a gladiator's gym, Hamburg in Germany. Please welcome Kevin Burmester. And his opponent standing 1.66 meters tall, scaled in at 62.8 kilograms, a spectacular professional record, 61 wins, 5 losses, 2 draws. He fights out of Iron Tiger in Cape Town, South Africa. Please welcome Nido Nintendo Gomba!
Nito Gomba of South Africa. He's got a busy schedule lined up. You know, he had a fight at the end of last year. This fight tonight, he's coming back in May. TFP4, it's on the way against, supposedly, Pascal Amoroso from Italy. Of course, he's got to get through this, and this is no gimme. Kevin Burmester comes with experience. Listen, I think these guys are just happy to be getting paid to fight again. You know, you know, being a pro fighter, is, uh, it's a hard. Um, and uh, they, they're just getting the opportunity to fight regularly. I think these guys are over the moon about that. Uh, Neto is very, very happy, I'm sure. But this is going to be uh, a nice little test for him before he, uh, before he fights for that uh, fight in May for the, for the title again, defends it. Nito Gomba, of course, his record built largely in Asia, largely in, China, in uh, Thailand. Thailand. He's fought in China, he's fought in Korea. And uh, here he is in Cape Town, the lead yeah. instructor at uh, Iron Tiger. No, you can just see the Thailand style. You can, you know, that you can you can identify that Thailand style from a mile away. Very straight up, short stance, cheeky, <laughs> cheeky cocky style. So just like I said, totally uneconomical. He comes in with all the flash. So yeah, you can see what I was talking about, but that. That heavy back foot fighting style, light, light front foot. Checking kicks, using the teep effectively. CI is not allowing him to get inside. Burmester undid by his own overzealousness on trying to land that kick. I see Burmester coming in with that, that heavy boxing defense, hands up high tight. Look for Nero to pop the elbow up the side there. Oh, that was a wild one. Look for Neto to pop those elbows up the middle, exactly like Shane Deacon was earlier. And you know what the funny thing is? The many looks of Nito Bomba. It's kind of like looking at my house, but the facial expression is always the same. Yeah, Neto attacking the arms nicely. They're kicking that. You know, guys think, oh, he's kicking the arms, it's blocked. When you feel those shins breaking those forearms, trust me, eventually you don't want to keep those hands anymore. Neto doing a great job of attacking those arms with the shins. You know, remember you train the shin pads. All of a sudden when there's no shin pads on. Mm, it's a wake-up call. Nato, very cool, very composed. See, this is what I this is what I talk about using that teep so effectively. Calm, collected, controlling the range effectively. See, one for one, one for one. Beautiful. Really good. What an elbow from Nito Gomba, followed by a spinning Burmester elbow. Burmester taking a lot of damage on those arms. A lot of damage on those arms. Wow, you can see the Beautiful me. popping up already on Burmester's shoulder. Burmester is playing straight into Nito's game, you know. N Nito's is pulling him in, pulling him in, and then catch catching him on the counter. He needs to be more static. Let Nito come to him. If you let Nito come to him, it's a lot harder. Coming forward like that, Nito's capitalizing on it. Gomba putting on a show so far. The blood Ooh, is starting a bit to of blood trickle. Going. Looks like that elbow did a bit of damage. Yeah, it looks like it was worse than initially thought. It's opened up right now. Yeah, the head bleeds a lot. Sometimes the smallest cut can bleed so much. Doesn't look like it's bothering his eyes. I think it's in his hairline. It seems to be spreading around a lot. But the problem with it being above the eyeline is that it's all going to flow down. Yeah, it looks like it's in the middle. It seems like it's flowing down, down the middle of his face. Yeah. What happens is if it's in the hair, like sometimes the, the hair kind of... Below it comes trickles straight down in like a, like a, a direct flow into the eye that you can't see. Well, now the bucket wasn't in play and water got poured all over his head. Oh, you see, this and now we made a mess of the corner. This is a big problem because, you know, it becomes so slippery and it's... You know, possibly it means that housework is going to have to be done. Give him a little bit more time to yeah. recoup himself. It could have been a ploy from the corner of the Germans. Yeah, they're going to have to clean that. And you know, even once you wiped it, it's already wet, so... Optics are everything and there's water underneath that bucket. That's, that's also what people don't realize. It's another thing that, uh, that Nick's done really, really well is those cans make a huge difference. When the ring or the canvas is wet, 
it's impossible to fight. You, you know, you've got no traction. You can't cover distance. You can't explode off of a, off a mark. Um, whereas those cans catch all the water and it makes it so much, so much better for the fight. You know, there's more grip when the guys are exploding or attacking. But you've got to use those. People don't understand how important those little props, those buckets are. It's all fun and games in the corner of Nino Gomba. He's as happy as they can come and he is enjoying himself on Saturday night at the Casino Grand West. Yeah, that, that elbow did a bit of damage. It was a bit wobbly after that elbow. That's probably what caused all of the problems, the fact that's coming out of the top of the head. Kevin Burmester, courtesy. Nino yeah, looking elbow. very calm, breathing, easy. You know, what people forget sometimes is it's about getting your heart rate down. You've got to get that heart rate down as low as you can. So breathing is important. But getting that heart rate down to the lowest level that you possibly can is more important because it's the elevated heart rate that makes you tired. Round number two. They're doing the housework in the corner. As quick as they can. Yeah, it's still very wet. Uh, I think they better avoid that corner at all costs. Referee Jean Ray is ordering them to keep doing the housework. It's not good enough and also telling them those buckets are there for a reason. Yeah, Jean Ray, look, a lot of experience in this game. Probably one of South Africa's most experienced rep. Jean Ray is himself. Back to the action, Bomber versus Burmester. All kinds of drama unfolded in round number one. Burmester had his head split open by a suspected elbow. He's now in there tough against a marauding and happy fighter. That is now Beautiful elbows off the fence. Beautiful elbows. Beautiful elbows. Yeah, he did. He, he held on to the ropes, which, which gave Neto the, the opportunity to throw those down elbows. Neto lunging a bit with his punches. I don't think he should be lunging so much with the punches. He's doing so well with his legs. He needs to just tap with the hands, set up those legs. Be patient, be calm. His game plan at the moment is working perfectly. See that heavy front leg. Burmester heavy on that front leg. Neto, you can also look for the sweep as he steps in. Kick that front leg out from underneath him, score some big points. Crack, crack. That is the sound the shin makes when it strikes the ball. He's, he's attacking those forearms in a big way. Burmis has taken a lot of damage and it's only... Yeah, I think, I think, I think uh, Nero cut the, the, the top of his head a little bit more with those three down elbows that he threw in the clinch. Nero, so cool, so calm. It's only the second round, we're not even midway through. But Burmis hanging tough like all the Germans have that have fought before him in Cape Town tonight. Nero pushing him back. Oh, that was a good one. Even through the guard, you can see that the damage on his head. The Burmester coming back. Every time Neto throws, he comes back. It's a very good, a very good technique in Muay Thai. You know, if somebody kicks, you kick them back. Nothing's for free. You've got to pay taxes, buddy. The beauty as well. Of, oh, know, beautiful body hands. shots. The subtlety of his defense. He sees these things coming. Well, if you look at his stance, he's fighting on that heavy on the back foot, light on the front foot, standing very straight up. He's got that the checks ready. There's no rush, no panic. The weight transfers there is very balanced, and that's so important in Muay Thai. Staying balanced, staying light on that on that front foot. Balance and explosion. Muay Thai is all about balance and rhythm. Oh, beautiful sweep! Wow, beautiful sweep! Look on his face. He really didn't know what happened there. He set it up so nicely. Jumped in there. He checked and got oh, number two. Neto just taking over control here. Yeah. As if to say, for good measure, let's put you on your backside one more time. Same move. He's got to be careful. Burmas is not in power in his punches. As we saw earlier, it only takes one. It only takes one. Bombo is putting on a clinic. Really good round by Bombo. Round number two comes to an end. Burmas is hanging tough. Bombo is just having the time of his life. South Africa putting on a really good show tonight. And the crowd are absolutely loving every minute of what they get to see. A genuine Muay Thai built in Asia, built in Thailand, coming to Cape Town and putting on a show for his hometown fans. Beautiful. This is what we want to see. You can see there how uh, Burmester was holding the ropes. 
which actually was to his disadvantage because Nero didn't even have to do anything. He just chopped with those elbows on top of the head. I think he actually cut him again on top. He also shimmied up the ropes as if to be held up by the middle rope himself. Yeah, so what he did be climbing, we call it the monkey time. So he just lifted his leg First time I've ever seen that move in my life. <laughs> And if it's the first time I've seen a move coming from him, how much else has he got in his pocket that he hasn't bothered to bring out to him? Yeah, it's one of those things when, when somebody's really, really trying to, trying to hold you in the clinch and they're locking your body, you just literally jump on top of him. So it makes him a little bit more tired if they're carrying your weight. Nero's, he's an he's a old school uh, Thai fighter. He's been to Thailand, he's lived there, he's fought there. You know, he's a wily old character. You learn a lot of tricks there with those Thais. <laughs> We're just boring with them every day there. Let me tell you something, you get your ass handed to you on a daily basis in Thailand, so that's why your, your skill sets really, really improve super fast. <laughs> that little triple faint as he stepped in there. All two minutes being used to the fullest by Burmester's corner. Multiple cuts having to be closed on the top of his head. Vaseline, adrenaline, Q-tips, all the tricks in the book are being brought out by his corner. They're putting on a little clinic here today, really, really good to watch. A lot of water on the ring. Yeah, it's getting worse with this fight and the last fight coming up. Carl Baywatch Bergman is going to be taking on oh. Enrico see Roger. See, Burmester's arms have taken a beating. <laughs> He's not going to be waving goodbye to anybody soon. Okay, fighters. <laughs> His uh, arms are looking like his legs were looking like it earlier. <laughs> Absolutely. Away we go, it's round number but three. But he's still coming forward, he's still got, he's got a lot of fight left in him. Like I said, it ain't over, it takes one, one, one knee, one elbow, one punch. I uh, don't see it happening, but... Never say never. Touching the gloves and away they go. Oh, there's a lot of water in the ring, a lot of water going to make make for a bit of an untidy fight but nothing you can do about it really you know everything that Bombo does is theatrical it all has an extra zing about it it's yeah. excessive movement and oftentimes it's landing yeah for those of you watching at home if you watch Neto this is uh, Nedo and Shane Deacon earlier. This is what you want to. This is what you want to aspire to be: calm, collected, balanced, um, Sharp. really controlled with everything. Use all your weapons. Use them effectively. Don't force your offense. You know. How many varieties of elbows is he able to throw? Well, in Muay Thai, you've actually got eight eight different elbows. So there's eight varieties that you can utilize. Colonel Sanders would have proved. And, uh, herbs and spices in the broth. And, th and those are the only only eight of the ones that they use. Then you can be you can use your initiative and create your own as well. <laughs> and I'm sure improvisation is something that comes naturally to Bombo. Hundred percent. So collected, cool, calm. No energy being wasted on big things. Bit of a Swiss Army knife. I'd, I'd like to see Neto throw that knee through a little bit more on those kicks. You know, he's straightening the leg a little bit early, losing a lot of power. If you, if you let that knee go through center line, he'd be doing a lot more damage. Oy, here we go. But you know, I also get the feeling there's an impending sense of doom because if Gomba decides to open up, which I'm sure he can, what are we going to see coming out of Burmester in terms of absorption? What could be coming up in round number four and five? I think, unfortunately, I think Burmester's style is very much like a brawling style. He'd like it if, if Nedo had to come in and start going a bit mad. Uh, the way he's fighting him is perfect because he's, you know, he's he's firing first. You know, Neto's he's punching first. He's not letting Burmaster throw the first punch. He's always initiating. He's fainting, as you can see there. So he's keeping him hesitant, and he doesn't want to let those hands go because he knows he can eat an elbow, a kick, a knee. Neto's doing everything just so smoothly and perfectly right now. Is that a trickle of blood coming down the face of Nilo Bomba? His right eye in the corner. Burmester got his little pound of flesh and he's hanging tough and he's ready. Yeah, Burmester's nice, battered and bruised. 
Leto, playing to the crowd. Leto looking very, very fit. Very, very happy. And I don't blame him. So far, dominating this fight really, really effectively. I just love watching Muay Thai like this. So technical, balanced. Um, you know, for the kids at home, this is this is Muay Thai. This is, you know, watching Nero here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's improvisation, the way he uses his weapons. He doesn't force anything. He waits until his opponent's in the right range before he uses a knee or the elbow. He doesn't try and jump in unless he does a jump elbow from far. But he's being, he's very, he's, he's really improvising well. He's using every single tool in the box. You know, as much as we love seeing the South African fighters excel at this level against international competition, and as much as we saw Adrian Van Beek put on a bit of a clinic at the end in terms of his fight with Florian Krogan, now we see in this fight here, Kevin Vermes, these Germans have come, they've fronted up, they're tough as nails, and they're hanging in there, especially when you consider that look a little bit like that, they're from a K1 background, but here they are fighting Muay Thai and hanging tough to the very end, and I absolutely applaud the guts and courage shown by every single fighter to get in the ring, but especially these Germans that we've seen tonight. Oh, 100%. It's so nice to see. You know, any international competition is good. Um, as we saw earlier, this is not a like bad matchup or anything like that. As we saw with Evan that uh, knocked out uh, with that awesome knockout. I mean, you so know, yeah, yeah that's it, it's it's anything can happen in the sport. You know, I, it's it's so nice to see the South African fighters really being clinical, putting on a good show, staying cool, calm, collected. It, it it says a lot for the for the future of Muay Thai in South Africa. Really, really excited to see see the fight happening like this. I love being shown by the crowd live in attendance at the Grand West Casino and Entertainment World, Cape Town, South Africa, TFP3, the Continental Collision. The fourth round is underway. Nido Gomba seemingly ahead. Perfectly on all the scorecards, causing all of the damage. Kevin Burmester hanging tight. Oh, beautiful head kick. <laughs> Bomber stalking forward, calm. Absolutely. Poker player's face here at the casino. See, there's that, that tip I always talk about, tipping that front leg to make him respect that range. You know, Burmas is not dangerous until he gets into punching range. So keep him at bay, keep him away. You don't have much to worry about. You can see the Nero controlling the range really effectively. Starting to have a lot of fun now. He's just, he's just toying around, having fun. Burmas has got a lot of game in him, though. You know, when you've lived in Thailand and you, you've clinched as much as they do in Thailand, I mean, they live clinching there. Uh, you don't want to get into the clinch game with uh, Neto. He's, he's got a good clinch game. I can guarantee you that. Burmester had his hands up. He had that move scouted. He saw that that right kick was coming at speed. Caught it quite nicely on the glove. Nice. Left hook to the body on Nito Bomba. Right under the elbow, timed perfectly. Nito's being a butcher right now. He's really, really chopping away at those arms. Butchering those arms. That's the thing, waving is one thing. How's he going to send the text? Now he's starting to turn that shin over into it. Before it was straight leg kicks. Now he's really getting that knee across, using that shin across that forearm. Beautiful, beautiful right. Check hook as he stepped back. Whoa, there's that water. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's what I was talking about. Starts getting a little bit untidy. Neutral corner. Looking a bit like the Valley of the Waves right now. <laughs> yeah, it's so unfortunate, you know. It's that it does, you know, sometimes it just messes up the fighter's ability to be super effective at what they're doing. Now they're just standing there trading cheeky little knees. <laughs> Ray Rip didn't say break. <laughs> Defend yourself at all times, even especially in the clinch. You break. Burmaster's still got a lot of fights in him. Left hook to the body. 
scored twice this round with that self I really shot. love seeing and I respect fighters that just never ever give up. You know, they stay in your face, they're still giving it. So awesome to see. This is what the sport's all about, you know. It's, these are warriors. They really, really, really are warriors. They train their hearts out every single day. Spend hours and hours in the gym. And this is where they come and actually have fun. And you know, as this crowd, as much love as the local crowd has for Nino Bomba, I think that they're also starting to form on the side of Kevin Burmester, you know. Seeing this toughness in all the fire that he's had to walk through tonight, blood coming out of the top of his head, he has an absolute star in the way that he has executed his game plan, he's tried his best, and landing those left hooks to the body in the last round shows he's still very much interested in making a play in this fight. As I say, and I'll, and I'll always say it because we've seen it happen over and over again. It just takes one shot. You know, one good liver shot. I mean, those, those shots are two good liver shots. One good shot in the right spot. And Neto's not going to stand up again. He's going to struggle. So, you know, you, you just, you just got to keep pushing through. Keep chasing. Keep chasing that one shot that you know can finish a fight. But set it up. You've got to set up your offense. You can't just lunge in and throw wild. If you see the bodies open, throw one or two head shots and then dip that liver, that, that liver shot in. Immediately behind it. Now we await the response from him. You know, he took those two liver shots. Yeah, he looks he knows fine. that they're there. He knows they're fine, but you're not going to want to take too many more of them. No. Are we going to see a different leader come out and put the final round here at the Grand West Casino TFG3? Yeah, you've got to be careful. People, people, until you've been hit from the liver, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a shot that you actually cannot fight through. Uh, your body literally just switches off. It's like load shedding. The brain says yes, the body says no. It's like ESCOM's in control. It'll be like stage eight load shedding. That's probably the best analysis of the liver shot that I've heard. You see Burmester seriously defending that body. Those elbows are tight around the body. Those kicks that Nato's been throwing. Again. Valley of the Waves comes into play. And also, every time you kick your opponent, if you tip him, you know, that sweat gets on your feet, and then immediately you can actually see all the footsteps. Your wet feet become slippery. So it's just, it's, it's the game. The pants are also drenched from both guys. Yeah, it runs down. I mean, always in the gym, it's that, that's what happens all the time. You tip your partner, and next minute you're slipping because your foot's wet. We're going to need a raincoat up here at ringside. Eventually, the action's in our corner. It's going to be interesting to see the next fight. Oh, that was close. Bad intentions coming from Nido Gomba. Burmester just slipping under the elbow. Beautiful. Great back throw. <laughs> Nido guiding him to like dry spots. <laughs> Come, let's fight over here. That sounds like what it is. Hey friend, life's better. It's almost like a, like a sparring session in the gym. Same thing happens, you know, it's like wet spots. Okay, let's move. The nice thing is only dry pads on the ring have to be right in front of us. Yeah, we definitely have uh, the pound seats. Burmester's head looks like he's been played with Vaseline. <laughs> so much Vaseline in that hair. He's going to be washing his hair for a day or two to get that out. Vaseline, not very easy to get out the hair. Yeah, his bathtub is going to look like the Exxon Valdez disaster. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, it's round number five. 47 seconds to go. Burmester versus Gomba. Gomba's slowing down. I don't know why Gomba's not attacking more. He's waiting for Burmester to attack and counter. Burmester just riding him again. I mean, Gomba just riding him. Gomba's just looking for the counters. He's standing, waiting for him to attack. And Burmester's playing right into his trap every single time. And I think Nero's looking for that one elbow. There we go. Just looking for that one counter elbow. Is it safe to say Bomba got a harder fight than he bargained for considering going through the first two rounds of what we saw? I think he got the fight he wanted. I think, I think you know, in this game, you don't really want an easy fight. You don't want anything from an easy fight. When you get to this level, you want the hardest fight you can have every single time. 
If you're not getting hard fights, you're not growing. That was a beautiful fight and praise going to both fighters in equal amounts. Really, really good fight. Pointing, blaming you, you did not know Ladies and gentlemen, one final round of applause for these two fighters. A wonderful exhibition of Muay Thai. And after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards with your winner coming by way of unanimous decision victory, fighting out of Iron Tiger and South Africa, Nido Nintendo Kompa!
Sie haben es nie 